So this is an exercise that you could try with your class to demonstrate the kinematic equations. What I've got here is a piece of string with some masses tied to it. You could use fishing line with fishing weights if you wanted to. So first of all, what we'll do is we'll drop the piece of string and I'm going to drop it onto this piece of wood as the weights will make quite a loud noise when they hit the piece of wood. And we'll listen to the sound pattern that we hear as the weights hit the piece of wood. Hopefully you heard that the sounds got closer and closer together as the weights fell. This was because the weights which were highest above the board were travelling with the highest speed because they'd had longer to accelerate and so they travelled as the same distance in less time at the end because they were going with a faster speed. So a fun challenge to ask your students is, well, what spacing will we need to make between the weights in order to get a constant sound, so a dung, 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 as they hit. So let's have a listen to one which I've created here. So the trick with getting the constant sound is to have an n squared relationship, so where n is an integer. So what that means is this first distance, let's call that s. The distance to the second mass here is four times one, that's three, four times the distance to the first mass. The distance to the third mass, which is this distance here, is nine times this first distance. So how we can derive this relationship is with our kinematic equation s is equal to ut plus a half at squared. In this case, I was dropping it from rest. So u was equal to zero, and the acceleration was given by g, the acceleration due to gravity. So we have the equation s is equal to a half gt squared. So we can rearrange this and see that the time it takes for the mass to fall is given by the square root of 2sg, where s is the total distance covered by the mass. Now, if we want our masses to hit at constant intervals, we want the first time interval, t1, to be t, the second time interval, t2, to be 2 times t, the third time interval, t3, to be 3 times t, and so the general pattern is that the nth time interval should be n times t. So looking at our equations, we've got that our nth time interval, tn, is equal to n times t, so this is equal to n times the square root of 2 times the first distance, that's the distance between the first two masses, over g. Because the square root of 2s1g is the time it takes the first mass to fall. And so this is also equal to the square root of 2 times the distance that the nth mass has to fall, sn, divided by g. So taking the last part of that equation and cancelling out the common terms, we've got a common root 2g. We've got n times the square root of s1, which is this distance, has to be equal to the square root of sn, which is the distance between the first mass and the nth mass. So sn is equal to n squared s1, and using this we can work out where to place our masses on the piece of string to get a constant frequency noise as the masses fall.